Now I'll read from the Bible. Today's passage is Luke 9, verses 1 through 9. Once again, Luke 9, verses 1 through 9. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, Take nothing for the journey no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirts. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. So they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard all about what was going on. And he was very perplexed because some of were saying that John had been raised from the dead, others that Elijah had appeared, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago had come back to life. But Herod said, I beheaded John. Who then is this I hear such things about? And he tried to see him. Please allow me to pray. Dear beloved Heavenly Father, we know that you are truth and that you will never let us go. You will never let us walk away. You will always help us and you will always guide us. We know that you will give us power. And that you love us. Today, too, Lord, we know that you are the true God, and please allow us to be able to know you more in a deeper way today. Please prepare our hearts in such a way. Also, Lord, allow the Holy Spirit to work freely in our lives. Allow the Holy Spirit to touch us in a deep way and allow us to know you as well. We pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. We're going through the book of Luke and uh, going in order of it. Today we are up to chapter 9, and it's the very start of chapter 9. So today we'll be learning from this passage. There was once a time when uh, there was a discussion going on about heaven and hell. They were people were arguing back and forth about this, and when such a discussion takes place, there was this one guy who would like always make a comment, but for some reason he didn't talk at all about this uh, particular um, discussion topic. One of his friends was wondering what was up with him, and so he said, "Well, why why aren't you talking?" And he explained. He said. Well, you're talking about heaven and hell, right? And I have friends who are actually in both places, so it's hard for me to comment. So how about you? Where are your friends now? Do you want to have your friends going to heaven or to hell? I hope you will talk more about uh, Jesus to uh, I'll lead them to heaven. So in this passage, it's talking about people who uh, would be going to heaven and also people who would not and it's kind of giving a comparison of uh, such people. So we'll learn from this passage today. So first, uh, we'll talk about people who went to heaven. And these are people, uh, for example, uh, Jesus' disciples. Jesus was doing work in uh, the area of Galilee. He did mission work there around Capernaum and uh, began in that area. The work that Jesus did in that area was about to come to an end in this passage, and he was about to move on to Jerusalem. 
when he was about to end his missionary work there, uh, the idea was to have it further expanded. And so uh, Jesus used his disciples to do so. At that time, Jesus told the disciples uh, something. He said the first thing he, they were supposed to do was pro proclaim the kingdom of God. The second thing they were supposed to do is to cast out uh, evil spirits and heal diseases as well. Those were the two things that the disciples were supposed to do. Jesus also had been doing the same type of things. So he was wanting to the disciples to carry on his work that he had been doing in the same way. That was the uh, work of the disciples. However, Jesus didn't just tell them what to do, but he also gave them the authority uh, to do so. Look at verse 1. It says, When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. So in verse 2, it also says, He sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. At that time, when Jesus was trying to use the disciples to do this work, he gave them specific like uh, points of caution. And that's what's uh, written in verse 3. It says, Take nothing for the journey. No staff, no bag, no bread, no money, and no extra shirts. In other words, just go as you are, basically. This is uh, something... This is not a rule that anyone doing mission work has to do follow. <laughs> the, the reason Jesus had these people give them these directions is uh, for a specific purpose. And it's uh, mentioned in Luke uh, 22, 36. It says, uh, if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. So here you can tell the circumstances were differ different, that uh, these people working on mission work were supposed to take things with them. So in Jesus' mind, at this specific time in Luke 9, um, they were not to take anything. But in like Luke 22, they were supposed to take uh, things. So obviously the circumstances were different. In today's passage, though, it is uh, telling them to go forward with nothing. And there was a specific reason for this. The reason is mentioned here, and it, it's... It's the uh, point that these uh, the disciples are supposed to totally believe in God and moving forward. So that's why they weren't to take anything. They were to trust God that he would provide them for whatever they might need on their journey. They were to believe that God would fulfill their uh, needs, and that's why they weren't supposed to take anything when they went. The reason why is that they, their message itself was to have other people believe in God. So they had to first uh, show that in their own lives in order for the um, purpose and to uh, be fulfilled. They had to totally believe in God themselves, otherwise the message that they were going to share would have no impact. That's why they just were sent out as they were with uh, nothing with them. In that way, people uh, would be able to believe uh, what their um, message was because it would have more strength to it. They were just supposed to look to God and trust Him. That's how Jesus instructed them at this time. And long after this specific uh, 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 time, Jesus looked back on this time and he asked them a question in uh, Luke 22. It says, When I sent you without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? So Jesus was asking, you know, at that time, you know, I told you not to go anything, but um, what was the result? Were you, were you ever in lacking of anything? Were you ever in need? And so he asked them this at a later date. His disciples said, nothing. We, act, we lacked nothing. In other words, they always had whatever they needed at that time. They were able to totally believe in God, and God provided everything that they needed for them, just as he said he was. This type of thing is something that is a principle of the kingdom of God. It uh, actually applies to everybody. It doesn't matter what country you're in or what uh, era you're living in, the principles of God remain the same. 
as long as you believe in God's word, it focuses and functions the same way. In Matthew, um, Jesus said, "So do not uh, do not worry by saying, 'What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear?' For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well." That's what he said. In the Old Testament, in Psalms, uh, it also speaks of this on topic. And a psalm is also a book of the a testimony of people's faith. For example, in Psalm 23:1, David、uh, wrote the following. He said in verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. In other words, God、uh, will provide, and so I'm not going to lack anything because God is my provider. Also,、uh, Psalm 34:10 says, "The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing." In other words, if you believe in God, you're not going to be lacking anything or any good thing either. From、uh, people's experience, they were able to write this psalm. In looking at Psalm 37:25, this is actually written by、uh, somebody who's an older、uh, Christian,、uh, speaking of his、uh, faith. It says, "I was young, and now I am old; yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread." <coughs> so, in other words, people who believe in God and walk with God. Never re- lack anything. Also, not that person, but,、uh, but their、uh, descendants too. People who believe in God are really、uh, in a good position. In the Old Testament, in First Kings seventeen, it speaks of a very interesting thing. A prophet Elijah. Was actually fed by crows. At that time in Israel, and the whole area had an extreme、uh, famine. There was no or food, a drought. Sorry, there's no drought, and、uh, they were、uh, up for a very hard time.、Uh, God told Elijah, "Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kerith Ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there." Pretty interesting, huh? So there is a, a little river there, and、uh, God told Elijah to、uh, hide there, and that he would drink that water, and that cro- a crow would bring him food. <laughs> That's kind of a rare thing.、Um, now we, it's kind of strange that、uh, that would happen. <laughs> What do you think? Well. Just according to what God said, every morning and every evening, a crow would bring him、uh, meat and bread. It was、uh, like a crow delivery service. <laughs> However, the crow was would not be an ideal、uh, delivery service because for Israelites,、um, scavenger type animals were considered dirty animals to them. They were unclean. And so this would not have been an ideal、uh, type of circumstance for Elijah, probably. Also, if you know about crows, you know that、uh, it's a kind of、uh, interesting thing. They are very sm-、uh, smart birds, actually. When you think of、um, crows, you think of them as being、uh, scra- scavenger animals that clean up、uh, things or eat anything. And but they're very smart. For example. If there is some old bread that's、uh, hardened, they want to, and they want to make it、um, uh, soft again to eat. The crows know what to do with it. It's not to put it in a, a microwave, but、um, crows long ago and maybe even today would do the following. They would go to、uh, freshly made、um, horse dung or cow dung, where it's、uh, still steaming, and then put it in there. <laughs> And after a bit of time, the、um, bread would have been become、uh, soft, and then the crow would eat it. Pretty smart, aren't they? 
at that time, the breads that the uh, crows got, <laughs> what do you think Elijah would have thought of eating that? Uh, it's it's often warm today too, isn't it? I wonder where it came from. <laughs> Why is it so uh, warm? <laughs> Maybe that's what he was wondering. <laughs> In any case, the crow was the one to um, bring the bread and meat, but why wouldn't the crow itself have eaten it? You know, the animals would have been lacking food themselves because of the drought. So it's kind of like God was giving a, a wallets to a thief to take care of. However, the crow didn't eat the food for Elijah and brought the meat and bread to Elijah every day. Looking at this uh, circumstance, you can see truly how God does control the entire natural environment. God knows even about a sparrow, a tiny little sparrow, God knows. So if we really trust God and move forward, God will work in miraculous ways. He can, God, God could even use crows. He knows sparrows. The disciples were in the hands of God, and this is what they learned uh, through this uh, circumstance in today's passage. There was uh, one more person who lived a totally different life than the disciples, and he was um, King Herod. When Jesus was uh, sending out the disciples to various areas and having them to begin their mission work, they um, were, you know, um, helping people. Uh, ca they were helping cast out e evil spirits and heal disease diseases. The the talk of this happening uh, came to King Herod as well, and he uh, became interested. And if you read uh, verse seven, it says that uh, he was very perplexed when he heard about this. There was a reason. Uh, this person Herod was uh, someone who was uh, not King Herod when uh, Jesus was born, but actually uh, that King Herod's son. So it was Herod Antipas, and uh, his father uh, was the one who was uh, in the king when Jesus was born. When his uh, father had died, the kingdom was um, given to his uh, children, and it was uh, divided up amongst them. So um, King Herod, this younger King Herod, was in charge of the Gallia area, and he, so when he heard about Jesus doing all this healing work in his area, he became very perplexed. And the reason for this is that just a little prior to that, the ba Baptist, uh, John the Baptist incident happened. This person, Herod, King Herod, was um, a very honorable person. There was a time when his... Um, when he looked after a beautiful a woman who was actually a, a res one of a distant relative of his, and uh, he took uh, her to be his wife, and her name was Herodia. When John the Baptist heard that what had happened, he was very uh, harsh in judgment about this and said that that's totally uh, uh, violating the law of Moses and it's a, a sin before God. So, of course, Herod was upset with John about this. And, uh, of course, his wife was too. And so they decided his wife really wanted John dead. The, so they uh, had John at first put in prison. But as for Herod, he uh, wanted to actually release John later on. That was his plan. But there was a, a circumstance that came up where it was not possible to do this. It was uh, Herod's birthday, and they had a huge party uh, for him, and many guests came. At that time, his um, wife's daughter came, and she uh, danced um, before everyone and did a very nice job. It was so wonderful. Uh, a wonderful presence for uh, King Herod that he told her and he, that, oh, it, well, your dance was just wonderful. And as a, a present back to you, I would like to give you anything you ask for. So this uh, little girl would probably, he, he was thinking that this little girl would probably ask for a ring or a dress or something. However, uh, her mom uh, gave the instruction. She said, well, if your father will let you have anything, then ask for the head of uh, John the Baptist. So the daughter went to, so the daughter 
went to uh, King Herod and said, I want uh, the head of John the Baptist. Before all these people, um, King Herod could not back down from his word. So he had John the Baptist's head um, brought to them on a platter. I'll read a little from that passage. It's in Mark uh, 6, verses 19 through 20. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him, but she was not able to because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be righteous and a holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Then they uh, ended up bringing the head of John the Baptist uh, to uh, the party on a platter. The younger uh, daughter passed this on to her mother. So this is uh, what happened. So this was not what uh, King Herod was really wanting to do. And he realized that this actually was sin likely at that time. But he was hearing that there was this, you know, miraculous uh, healings uh, going on. So he was thinking possibly that um, that it was John the Baptist, you know, resurrected or something. But he knew he had seen John the Baptist killed, or I mean, his head. So now Herod finally realized exactly uh, that this was a different person. This was Jesus who was mentioned in this passage. That's why uh, Herod wanted to see Jesus. However, uh, after this, uh, there is no record of King Herod actually going to G see Jesus. So when did he see Jesus? Well, it's likely that when he was at the Last Supper and, and confined by their, uh, after that by the Roman guards. And at that time, Herod uh, just happened to come to Pilate. Uh, Pilate told him that there was this guy named Jesus and uh, offered him the opportunity to talk to him. That's likely when uh, Herod first met uh, Jesus. However, the reason Herod wanted to see Jesus was that he just wanted to see miracles. So he asked him to do miracles. But Herod's uh, questions and so on uh, were not answered at all by Jesus. There are people like this who just want to know about Jesus' um, my miracles. Even though Jesus was right in front of him, the, the bread of life and everlasting life was right in front of him, uh, Herod was not able to gain this uh, everlasting life himself. The person who could give him eternal life was right in, for him, in front of him, and this was a wonderful opportunity, but he wasn't able to take this opportunity. So because of that, Herod's um, um, uh, life just ended in destruction. Herod was uh, focused on uh, status and authority and riches, and he had it all. However, his life itself was not abundant in another sense. There's a Christian doctor by the name of uh, Okio Hino. And uh, some people may already know about him. Uh, we've had many lectures. Uh, he's given many lectures, that's why. He's actually a younger student of, uh, who went to the same uh, high school that I did. He said the following. He said that a good life, uh, whether you have a good life or not, is actually determined by your last five years of your life. He looks after can uh, cancer patients, and he's looked over about 3,000 people uh, to this day. In his experience, he is able to see uh, that life is, uh, he sees that um, many people think life is more important, but that's not the truth. We do uh, think, many people do think that yes, life is the most important thing. But if you think about that, life is just how much time you have left here. That's what life means. And even if you think it's really important, life itself will pass on regardless. You can't hold on to it tightly because it'll just eventually go away. It'll just spread throughout through your fingers. So even if you think of um, if life as being important, then it will just end up going away. And that'll make your life just uh, very difficult here. 
if you're always trying to hold desperately onto your life, then uh, that will actually end up uh, making you struggle. So he's uh, realized that there's something more important than life. As for the um, cancer patients that he looks after, he tells them that he wants them to think about um, what the priorities are, are in their life, to rethink what their priorities are. He tells them to just worry about their cancer, you know, less than an hour a day. And for the rest of the uh, days and hours in the day, he says, to, you know, to live your life abundantly. That way, you can really maximize the rest of the life that you have here, the rest of the time you have here. He wrote a book, and the book's titled, A Good Life is Determined by One's Last Five Years. I will uh, read the first uh, sentences of his book. It says that when many people uh, are about to die, they start thinking about uh, what's important in their life. But that's too late. You really need to focus on uh, what's important in life at an earlier time. Even if you retire, that doesn't mean that your life is over. It means that you need to really focus on how to maximize what time you have and to have a, a desire in your heart to really uh, make the most of your life. He was saying that uh, the person uh, he uh, has a... Um, person he looks up to by the name of Uchi Muda, and uh, he lived a very hard uh, life, apparently. He had trouble with uh, human relationships and uh, difficulty maintaining a job as well. However, the last five years of his life, he lived in a, a great time. He was able to uh, realize uh, what was important in life and uh, live, live a very pleasant life uh, for his last five years. Humans don't know how much time they have left. We don't know when your last five years will be. That's why, starting today, it's best that you change the way your life so that no matter when light, when death comes, you will be ready to accept it. There was um, a person who was uh, became a, a Christian in the past, and he said that. Uh, this is it. Was that was his, um, you know, philosophy on life, and he just thought that was the uh, truth. But when he became a Christian, he realized that changed. Regardless of how your past is, as long as your last five years are great, then that's what's you know really important. Of course, many of you are likely um, still be alive for ten or twenty or thirty more years, but even if you set your goal for that far away, it's kind of hard to plan. So if you think it always that you only have five years, then you will really make an effort to follow God every day. If you think of 10 or 20 years, that's, that's pretty long term. So if you always focus on following God with a, a, a aim of five years, then when you pass those five years, you can just add five more. So just keep adding increments of five years. So then you can always live a great life, living it uh, fully for God and becoming a true uh, child of the king. Just five years. <laughs> and when you die, then you'll know that, yes, you really did live a great life. And other people around you will definitely miss you because of it. It's all important the last five years. Unfortunately, Herod was not able to live such a life. But we, like the disciples, can head toward heaven and continue our life in that way. Please allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we believe you. And so we've all lived different lives. But we all uh, thank you for the various uh, things you've brought about in our lives. We know that walking with you is uh, something that will be uh, even further blessed in these coming days and years. We thank you for this. Dear Lord, please allow us to have our lives be something before you that is good. We have that desire, Lord, so please continue to guide us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll now have a time of prayer and silence.
And I'll pray once more. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Today we have communion. So we'll make, uh, actually today we'll pass it out to you. Just uh, please wait. We'll have uh, some people come up and help with this. Uh, just a moment, please.